Hello, and welcome to the Sydney Coach Replay. This show is focused on instructional coaching and the power that video brings to this work. In each episode, we will talk with the Sydney Virtual Coach about relevant instructional coaching topics and even use some classroom footage to break down and analyze specific instructional strategies. I'm your host, Corey Camp, Director of Professional Learning for Sydney, and for today's episode, we have Kalina Pollard, one of Sydney's elite coaches from our Sydney Virtual Coaching Team. In addition to coaching for Sydney, Kalina is the Director for Digital Education and Innovation for the Harris County Department of Education. Welcome, Kalina. Thanks so much, Corey. I'm so excited to be here. Me too. I know that you and I can always... Um, do a lot of talking, so I'm excited to talk about this topic today. Today we're talking about implicit bias, specifically what it is and its impact on instruction. So Kalina, I know that you train on implicit bias, so tell us what it is and why it's important to us as coaches and as educators. Um, okay, so uh, implicit bias is, is a heavy topic. Um, but in short, um, implicit bias is the uh, stereotypes or the, the thoughts, the feelings that we might have uh, towards people that are um, sometimes very deep in our uh, subconscious. So we don't necessarily know that we even have them. Um, also, it's ex extremely important um, in, in instruction because, um, you know, some educators may not know that there are some things that they hold, some beliefs that they have, um, but when they open that door and when they do realize it, then so much more can flourish and um, it's doing what's best for kids. Yeah, so could you give our viewers an example of an implicit bias that someone might have? Um, absolutely. So um, when I do train on this, I generally try to give my participants a quiz. And some of the things I might say is um, just what do you think the, the best subject or, or what do you think that boys are the best in? What subjects are they the best in? And what subjects are girls best in? And a lot of times the answer I hear is that girls are really good at English and boys are really good at math. But no matter what the answer is, that's the belief you have. And so that can create a bias, which then leads you to the way that you instruct. That's interesting. So where do these biases come from for us? They are inherent. They are our truths. They are what we've uh, learned as we were uh, growing as, you know, with our parents, with our relatives, um, with the, the people that we were in around. So the environment in, in which we were in, a lot of times is the thing, uh, the, the, the area in which our beliefs and our biases are created. So do we realize when these are created? I know you've got a great story that you tell about uh, one of yours that you, you kind of got from as you grew up and driving in the car with your mom. Yeah, absolutely. And, and they're not. So no one directly tells you those things. They just tend to happen. So the thing with me and my mom is, you know, she would be driving and as a kid, I'm in the car and she's, you know, complaining about a certain group of, of people and, you know, that's always who it tended to be, who she felt, you know, was not driving the way that she wanted them to drive. So over the years, hearing that, that was something that I started to believe. So when I began to be a driver, that's what I looked for. And if I felt like they were not driving fast enough, which is usually the case for me, um, it was it was generally, you know, what I thought of. And sometimes I didn't even look over to see who it was. I just believed that that must be, you know, the bad driver in that car. An entire ethnic group uh, must be those, the people that are driving, you know, badly in, in my mind. Yeah, so, so that deep inherent subconscious doesn't necessarily make us um, bad people. It's just, you know, a result of our, our nurturing environment. So once we realize this, once we recognize that we may or may not have a bias, um, how do we move past that as educators? So the first thing I want to say is that implicit bias is pervasive. Everyone has them. Even an impartial person that's supposed to be a judge has them because it's things that you just believe. It's kind of like girls 
uh, like pink and boys like blue. They're just things that we believe. But it takes for us to recognize that in order for us to make any sort of change. And again, it doesn't make you a bad person. It makes you aware. So when you become aware of the things, uh, the beliefs, the biases that you hold, it can change that educator and make them a better instructor because then they truly are trying their very best to do what's best for all kids and not just the specific group of kids. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, it kind of makes me think a little bit about how video could be, you know, used in this. I may not be able to be aware of that as I'm just reflecting back on my instruction, but what do you think about using video to help with identifying or even un overcoming implicit biases? I think it's a strong and, and necessary tool because I, I do think it's, it's very important to have uh, someone that you trust and someone that you have a relationship with, uh, a relationship with uh, built on respect that can, uh, you can have those open dialogues with. So you'd have to start the conversation about implicit bias. And then you'd have to have someone, you know, basically observing you and kind of watching for those patterns. But then once you guys have discussed those things and what you're actually looking for, that's when a, a video can be brought in. Because when you're looking at it yourself, when you see those patterns for yourself and no one's telling you about them, then they're undeniable. Those are the things then that you can say, you know what, maybe I do need to, to work on these things. And some of those things, um, again, is a pattern. The things that you might look for is, are you only giving girls hugs? Are you only high-fiving white males? And think about the pattern that you have once you have that information, that gives you the power to, to really reflect on what you need to do next and, and maybe where some of those biases came from, but also knowing that they can always be unlearned and you know none of it makes you a bad person, absolutely not. Um, it, this is a way for you to open the door to growth. Yeah, I love that. And that, you know, my background is in psychology, so I love thinking about the, the social psychology and just kind of how our, our minds work towards those things, learning and unlearning things. And this has been a really great conversation. As you said, it's a deep, deep topic. So that's all we have time for, for today. But we're going to continue this conversation with you next week. Uh, before we go, though, what's one key takeaway that you want our viewers to walk away knowing about implicit biases today? One thing that I really um, I had to to accept when I was um, first uh, on this journey was that I needed to be open minded. I needed to first, you know, give myself a break, you know, and know that I'm going to discover some things that I didn't even know existed about myself. So being open to realizing that there are some things that I may see that I didn't know, but that it was okay because the point of me doing it was so that I became a better educator and that I became the instruction I was giving my students. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's a great takeaway. So tune in next week as we continue this conversation with Kalina and discuss the strategies for addressing these implicit biases in our own coaching. Thanks for being with us today, Kalina, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for having me, Corey.